On this episode, we are expressing emotions about scrolling. How is, what is the, like, yeah, yeah, there's just like... And then even more emotions. <laughs> but we also speak the truth. Paint is bad, but it's not as bad as fandom. Mm, hi everybody, welcome. This is Christian, this is LazyFs Academy, this is the advanced. The advanced schmuck tutorial. Episode number three. We had some chaotic first two episodes, a lot of planning, but now we're finally getting to the thick of it. And yeah, things are interesting. Things are starting out interesting. Let me let me show you real quick what I have here. Okay, so this is the master plan we are established early on. We just did the performance test. There was a, um, a doggy zone that I want to discuss. We're going to discuss this real quick, but we know that we can like the maximum ceiling of what we can uh, possibly achieve is around 750 bullets. That should be okay for uh, sometimes to deliver a kind of like a bullet helly kind of experience. We're not going to be a big, you know, crazy bullet hell kind of game, but we can deliver actually a lot of bullets. And this actually, when I found this out, I got <laughs> a lot of, a lot calmer because unless GG3 does not able, is not able to put even close to 750 bullets on the screen. So we are already like, we can, we can go, we can go. So we did the performance test. Again, we're going to come back to this later real quick, but um, today what we're going to do is we're going to focus a little bit on the scrolling prototype. There's a lot of questions about the kind of length of a level that we can achieve with our little shmup. We know we want to probably just like focus on one level and make it like a really meaty level. Um, we're gonna, not going to try even try to make multiple levels. Uh, one meaty level is what I need. Um, but how big of a level can that be even? Like what can we even put? Like how is, what is the, like, yeah, what, yeah, there's just like a lot of, unknowns ahead of us. And we'll also want to maybe establish kind of like a <clears throat> test bed where we can start working later on on our tile set. But first, let's go back to the performance test. One of the doggy zone question was, how does scrolling and collision detection, all of these things, how does these things, <laughs> game logic, how, those, uh, how do those things eat into our performance? And they do eat into our performance. Obviously, they should. So this is, I did a little bit of a work already. I am, here's a little bit of a code where I'm just moving the bullet by 0.5 pixel downwards. Every bullet is just moving downwards. And when it leaves the bottom edge of the screen, it's reset. So it's kind of a little bit already collision detection to some extent, it's very small collision detection and movement. And how does that affect our bottom line? Oops, I pressed, I pressed the button. I, I, I made something broken, no. Where is it? Unexpected symbol in your... Ah, oh, I put a one. <laughs> Alrighty, get off to a great start. All right, so we see, yeah, we cannot do 750 bullets when we have this. We are at 109% of our budget. So we kind of have to cut off around 50 bullets or so. Yeah, around 50 bullets. So we're down to just 700 bullets now. If you want to move the bullets, actually. <laughs> and of course, uh, you know, all the game logic, you know, <laughs> the actual game <laughs> will obviously eat even more into that budget. Um, this is a little bit the situation where I will reveal that I, I will just shatter the illusion. You know, this is not the first time I'm making this game. This is actually, I already, two years ago, I went through this process myself. I kind of went through this learning process myself and I already know some of the answers that we are asking here in the, in the master plan because I kind of like went on a journey to discover them myself. But my master plan is replicating the process I went through back in the days. I, I was actually struggling with those questions. And what we're doing here in the early episodes of this shmup tutorial is actually following in the footsteps of the stuff I did before. All right, so this is my my uh, my prototype I, I did. I used to, back in the days, I used a slightly different approach. I just keep spawning more bullets to see when I reach reach the limit. And here we go at 558 bullets is where I reached limits. And this prototype, you know, it has ship movement. I can move my ship around. It has collision detection. And I'm sorry for the blinking, but yeah, I, the idea was also like, oh, what if I apply um, uh, palette effects to the bullets? What if I, there's some kind of animation happening? Well, I did those tests as well. So 550 bullets is something that is kind of like the limit if we add a lot of game logic and, and, and all this stuff. 
to our game, which is still fine. Like these are a lot of bullets on the screen right now, right? We, we, we still should be fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, uh, we're gonna keep in mind this magic number, 500 bullets, kind of like as a, as a as something to watch out for. When we're gonna spawn bullets, we're gonna spawn objects on the screen. We gonna uh, think about, you know, how many objects are on the screen at any current time to see how far away we are from our budget. So that is great. Let us now think about how to do the scrolling prototype. I'm just gonna call it scroll. And just as a reminder, I'm gonna paste in the goals, the text from our, um, from our uh, 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 master plan. I'm gonna paste it in here just to remember what we're doing the prototype. So we know when we're finished with the prototype. We don't wanna like make the entire game, you know? We're just making, we're trying to answer certain questions. Uh, how long of a level can we make? Uh, what is the scrolling speed? What is a good scrolling speed? What? Um, now, the question about the tile set, I'm gonna put it down here, um, but that's not our immediate priority. First, we're just trying to um, understand our technical limitations. Pico 8 is all about limitations, and we are gonna design our game to fit like a glove within those same limitations. So, the tile set is something that we are definitely worried about, but not right now. All right, so let us get started. Let us draw stuff on the screen. So let us do an init. Let us do a draw. And let us do an update. Okay, okay, not okay. We, it's update 60, ah. Okay, let us talk a little bit about this magical wonderland that is the map because it's something that we haven't really talked about a lot, but so let me let me give you a lowdown. So as you can see, this is the map editor. You can scroll out with a mouse wheel. You can see this entire map. Like it's all black, so you don't really quite see. It's <laughs> just like a black background, but yeah, this is, this is a lot of, this is a map that you can draw here. You can draw tiles too, and then you can draw that map on the screen. This is a cool system, and we're gonna try to use the system to draw the background of the scrolling behind our ship. However, there's a couple of little details that we need to keep, pay attention to. First of all, this map, it looks gigantic, but the lower portion of this map shares space with the sprite sheet. So let me show you like once again, just so you know, like here you are in the second tab of the sprite sheet, and I'm just gonna draw something inside the sprite sheet, like zero, one, two, and so the third tab, I guess, the tab number two. I did a sprite at uh, at slot 130. And so then I look at the map and you can see there's stuff in the map here. There is stuff here, suddenly. There's some dots happening here. That's because again, the lower half of the map is shared with the sprite sheet. Now, uh, we already established in the master plan that we are incredibly worried about the sprite sheet space so when it's where we're asking whether we want to have more sprites or whether we want to have more map, we definitely need the sprites. We desperately need the sprites. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we just get to we just get to use half of the map. So that's kind of like cuts away half of the map. How much of a map is that? Well, the map, just so you remember, is I have I wrote it down because I always forget the numbers. <laughs> the map width is 128 tiles. 128 tiles. The width, uh, no, that's the width of the map. The height of the map is um, it's 64 tiles. It's 64 tiles usually, but we said we're gonna, with the lower portion, the lower half of the map is not usable. So it's just 32 tiles in height. So it's a very wide strip and, 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 and quite, not quite as tall. Now just, to, just a reminder, that is the map. The screen is uh, 16 times 16 tiles. That is the, uh, that's the size of the screen. Uh, a, a tile is eight times eight in, in the system. So this in turns, if you do the math around here, this means that we have 128 divided by 16 um, tiles in uh, uh, screens in width. We have 128 tiles for the width of the map 
and each screen is 16 tiles in width. That means we have eight screens of map real estate in width and just two screens of uh, a map real estate in height. <laughs> Just two screens above each other. That's that's your entire height of the map. Ooh. So in total, we have like 16 screens of level space. 16 screens of level space. Okay. When we're talking about scrolling, how long it will take to take to scroll 16 screens, we actually don't really have 16 screens. We have 15 screens. Uh, and the reason for this is it's something that you figure out very quickly. We're going to figure out very quickly, and that is you already have to start with a screen filled on like you you can't have the level scroll in you have to already have some level on the screen as when you start the game so that's one screen gone and then there's still 15 screens above you that have to scroll down so our entire level can be at the current like if you just like do it like a very simple system where we just draw the map uh, can be uh, can be scrolling for 15 screens and then we're gonna run out of map. Is that how long of a level will that be? Well, let's just find out. Let's just see how that feels. I, d I have no idea. Well, I have some idea, but I haven't done it in a while, so I'm gonna do it again. Uh, let's just create some tiles first. Let's create some really nice, cool tiles. So I was thinking something about like this, a nice cool gray tile, something like this. And then we can maybe do like one. This is just like a kind of like a test environment. Uh, I'm just trying to establish kind of like some, some tiles with which, which we can build some kind of like thing. Maybe we can have some features on this test environment just so we can see something. Because we're gonna like, if just gonna be just like some weird boring background it's gonna be like maybe we misjudge um, you know how fast the background should scroll so we want to have like some stuff on the screen something i like to do here is maybe to have like um a little bit of a um yeah just like make it look like some kind of like weird uh crash test chamber thing kind of thing yeah let's just make some warning stripes uh so we can see you know where the edges are uh, let's just fill it with blue so we don't have to deal with transparency. Right, so let's build a bit of a level with these kinds of tiles. Just something that is really quick and dirty. So again, going back in here, I'm going to fill everything with this tile first. So you can see already, okay, there is, there is our, there is our, uh, there's our background and I'm going to fill in, you know, the edges of the map so I can see where one screen ends and another screen begins. This is why I'm doing this warning stripes in the first place. This is not just aesthetics, okay? <laughs> there's, a, there's a logic to my madness. I'm trying to like design a, kind of like a template for the different, different levels and we said that each uh, uh, screen is exactly 15 tiles in width and you can see, yeah, okay, something like this. Let's just, like, let's just scroll this once. Let's just scroll two screens. How about that? How about we just scroll two screens? And then we're gonna get to like something like this. We're gonna put some, some, I don't know, some machinery in the corners just to indicate that this is the lower edge. Is it the lower edge though? Wait a minute, we have to make sure. Oh, it's not the lower edge. See, I, 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 I'm, I may, uh, I'm looking here at the numbers down here because it tells me how far am I am in on the map. Uh, I can go all the way down to 31, to coordinate 31, because it starts at zero, right? The top left coordinate is zero, zero. So the last coordinate that you can still use is a 31. And you can already see, ah, I drew on the coordinate 32. So I kind of like encroached on the sprite sheet space and lo and behold, yeah, there is a brown pixel here suddenly. So that's what's happening. That's that's what happens when you start, you know, um, using the spray the space that is reserved for the sprite sheet. Oh, I'm gonna fill things here. Okay. So this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be starting area, something like this. And then uh, I want to indicate where that first screen ends. This is a bit confusing because as you can see, it's like very featureless. So that's why I want to maybe sometimes like put some of these things so I can see when when things are scrolling. 
Um, right, and then maybe I want to put it at coordinate 16. This is the, gonna be the top edge of the first screen, right? Okay, so let us try to put this stuff on, and we're not gonna care about the second column just yet. You can see that there's a cross on here, right? But if I put this cross on the map, I'm getting black. And that explains why the cross is here, to, to show you that sprite number zero is a very, very special sprite. If you put sprite number zero on the map, it will appear as invisible. So let us just put this on the screen. On the draw function, we're gonna go map. And let's just see what happens. Okay, we see the performance drops to 24%. <laughs> or at least like it drops by 24%. By uh, but yeah, we see um, the map. Now, what we're seeing here is uh, obviously this top edge of the map of this column, but we actually want to start at the bottom of this column so it scrolls down, right? Because, um, yeah, so let's, let's try to address this. And for that, I need to kind of research what the map statement looks like. Again, this is my own personal Pico 8 wiki that I set up and you can use it as well if you want to. Yeah, so this is the map statement. Um, so it has a whole bunch of values that you can dump in it. You can just call it without any values and it will just draw the map, but you can drop some values in here. And that is cell X and cell Y, the column location of the map cell in the upper left corner of the region to draw, <laughs> where zero is the leftmost column. Yeah, so this is kind of like the, the left, the upper left corner of where you want to start drawing the map, where where is the section of the map that you want to start drawing. Next one is S, X, S, Y. This, this means screen X and screen Y. This is the destination where you're drawing the map onto the screen. Again, top left corner of that thing. And then width and height in tiles. This tells you now how wide and how high, how tall that map section is that you are about to draw. All right, so I'm gonna copy this out. I'm gonna return in here, I'm gonna paste it in here, and let's just like, the layers thing is I'm not gonna care about the layer, we're not gonna have, uh, we're not gonna deal with the layer right now. Right, so cell X, let's just start zero, zero, just draw this entire strip. Uh, the source, uh, the screen is gonna go, we're gonna draw it zero, zero for now, but we're gonna think about this in a second. We're not gonna specify width and height, we're just gonna draw an entire friggin' map. Well, we could go cell, we, could, um, we could, could go 16. We know that we just aren't going to draw a 16 uh, tiles with screen. And we can say like it's 32 because we know the entire column is 32. Um, yeah, let's try that. Hmm, weird. Something is weird. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, mis I miscounted the, um, the amount of, of pixels. Now it works out. So we see exactly the same screen, but now we can move this around. Okay, so let us just make a variable called scroll and let's set it to zero, okay? And let's plug this variable into, let's just plug this variable into here. That is the Y position at which we are drawing the, uh, the map. And then we can do something like an update function. We're gonna go scroll plus equals one. Okay, it's scrolling. But as you can see, it quickly scrolls off screen because again, we're starting at the top of the column. So the column immediately scrolls off screen and all the sprays that we have, we never get to see that. So we need to kind of start the scroll at minus, at some kind of minus value. Now this scroll, a variable, this is actually counting pixels. Whereas for example, this 16 or 32, these are counting tiles. So that's kind of like a different unit we're working with. It's easy to convert from one to another. It's just like multiply by eight or divide by eight. Is there something that to keep in mind? This is tiles, this is tiles, this is pixels, this is pixels, this is tiles, and this is tiles. This is a bit, that's why the map statement can be a bit confusing, but don't worry, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. So 32 pixels is the height of our entire column of this little two screen section. Uh, that's actually 256 pixels. Uh, uh, and we're gonna go minus 256 because it's we're moving it up, right? So up means a negative direction. So we, now you can see this whole thing is scrolling down. But you can see like there's some weird gibberish happening here and that is just like because let me clarify this. Let's do a CLS2. 
So you can see now this, there's the background color where the map is coming in, okay? And now then the map is disappearing, okay? So now this entire column comes in, scrolls past, and then disappears. Now, uh, it, you already see the problem here. We cannot actually start as min a minus 256. We, it kind of looks, looks weird because we see nothing and then the level scrolls in. We kind of want to start with a level on the screen already. So it's kind of like minus 128. And then it kind of like looks okay. Now, this is crazy fast. This is crazy fast, so maybe 0 0.5. Yeah, okay. Okay, this feels more like a shmup. But as you can see, <laughs> that's not, like it's just gone like this. You know? It's just like one screen of scrolling. That's not a lot. Um, so yeah, the next problem that we have to kind of solve is that we need to kind of, like we need to take advantage of the entire width of the map, uh, which means we kind of have to probably split the map into multiple columns and stack them on top of each other. Okay, this calls for a bit of an illustration, so let me just clarify what I mean. That's, that's, that's not what I want. Paint! Paint is bad, but it's not as bad as fandom. <laughs> I'm establishing like a... like villains, my arch enemies. <laughs> okay, so this is kind of like exaggeration of what our map actually looks like. It's a very wide strip and kind of not, not very tall. And what we're trying to do now is we're gonna divide it into multiple columns, something like this. You know, we're just gonna put in multiple columns. Yeah, I, it doesn't matter. The, the number of columns I have is six now, but it's gonna be eight columns next to each other. And then what, what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stack them on top of each other, like this. And then we are going to scroll them all down, right? So here's gonna be our ship. And we're gonna have like the stack of tile segments stacked on top of each other and they will all scroll past the ship. And again, the question, because this is very important, the question we are trying to answer here is, how long is the levels? Like if you pick on what is a good speed. So if you pick a speed that feels about right for our gut feeling of how, how fast it's scrolling, if you pick a good speed, how long of a level will, will we create? Like how long will that level feel like? How much of a gameplay is that that we can create possibly within the limitations? All right, so let's get going. So this is, hmm. I'm not sure how to do this. Um, I, I've did it before, but you know what? I've been like, it's been a long time. It's been two years ago. <laughs> and also I've experimented a lot with this. I'm boiling the process down here. I'm just like, this This was quite of a challenge for me to figure this out. So, um, but I roughly did kind of like this this process. I did some mistakes, <laughs> a, a bit more mistakes that I'm going to do right now. Um, but yeah, I think this is this is a good approach here. So let us just make those. Uh, we're going to create um, an array of segments. Of we're going to call this map segs, and we're just going to draw those map segs onto the screen. Uh, let's just drop in a, one map seg, uh, map segs, comma, and we're going to use this weird. I hope you understand what I'm doing here. We're just using the add statement. We're adding uh, an, something to the map sex, which is kind of like an empty object at this point. An empty object, open, close, open, close curly brackets. Uh, and then within the curly brackets, you can do, you can separate, you can split one line into multiple lines. That's something you can do. And then you can define the object within these curly brackets. Mm. And something I want to add here is something like S, uh, let's, let's call it TX or MX, map X. That is going to be uh, oops, zero. MY is going to be zero as well. And you know what? That's that's all we need actually, because all of the segments that we so far have are of, you know the same size. Probably we don't even need map Y, to be honest. But let's just keep it around. To be honest, we probably don't even need the error. We could all, all calculate procedurally, but I think it's kind of like, you're gonna see. Right, so I, now I added one map segment. Now here in a draw function, I wanna just loop through my array of segments and just draw them onto the screen. So we're gonna go, um, we're gonna do a for next loop here. For i equals um, one, two, hashtag map 
segs do. I'm gonna go local my seg equals map segs square brackets i. We're gonna grab a map seg from from our map seg array. Um, and then and put it in like a local helper variable, right? We're gonna just so it's easier to access it. And then we're gonna do this map statement uh, by plugging in values from this array, uh, which are going to be uh, it's gonna be this mapsec.mx, mapsec.my. These are the locations of the top left corner of this a little square that we're cutting out of the map and putting on the screen. The top left corner of the uh, of the segment of the map measured in tiles. Uh, for this first segment it's going to be zero, 0, so nothing will change, but then we can add additional segments next to it. Okay, so this, this, uh, we're going to draw it at coordinate 0 and we're going to um, draw it at scroll. Now the problem here uh, that also happens, we are often, and we have to keep in mind, is that we want to stack the segments on top of each other. So the first segment is fine to be just at the coordinate scroll, but the next segment has to be moved up. So it's going to be scroll minus 256. So like 20, each segment has to be 256 higher than the previous one, right? So it's going to be 256. Let's just actually create a local variable for this. We're going to go seg, seg x. We're going to call it seg x. Uh, and let's just plug this because there's going to be some math involved. And I want to just make sure that that is. We're going to plug this into this uh, in the statement. So it's just like my seg mx, my seg my, the coordinate at which we're drawing is zero, so it's going to be always centered on the screen. Uh, but then the vertical position is going to be controlled by this little helper variable called seg x, and that is going to be scroll minus, so the next segment is going to be slightly above, and then we're going to go i minus one, multiplied by 256. Let's just get through this math a little bit. This seems complicated, but it's not too, too harsh. So the i is you know, the number of the segments that we're, we're going through this for next loop. The first segment, for the first segment, this one, i is going to be 1. And this first segment, we want the vertical position to be just like at the position scroll. So i minus 1 is going to be 0, that this whole thing is going to be 0, and then we multiply it by 256, it doesn't matter, it's just 0. So it's going to be like this whole thing disappears, for, for the first segment it's just going to be, the first segment is just going to be at position scroll. Now if we don't, we don't have the second segment, but if we have a second segment, that segment, this little passage here is going to be 2, i is going to be 2 because that second segment, minus one, so this will be one, multiplied by 256, so we're gonna have 256, uh, the scroll position, minus 256. So it's gonna be 256 above. And then the subsequent segments are always going to be 256 pixels higher. So we're gonna get exactly what we wanted, we're going to ha get this stack of segments on top of each other. Okay. Now I've been I've been talking, I'm explaining this code, but <laughs> I'm not even sure if it will work. Okay. We set we see the one segment. That's good. We see the one segment, and then it's over. Okay. So let's see if we can get uh, a second segment. I'm just going to use this code. Like right now, we're not really con concerned about efficiency. We just like want to see it work. Um, so for the second segment, this is going to be, you know, this segment next to it. So for you guys, the segment next to it, it's all mirrored because of the camera. So that second segment, that second column starts at um, coordinate 16. So just to show you what I mean. So, you know, this first column, this is the first column, yeah, right? This, this one that starts at x equals zero. 
the second column starts at x16. Okay, and we're just gonna copy this stuff here. Can we? Can we do that? Can we? Can we? I mean, oh, here you can, you can, you can, haha. See, you can, you can, you can go uh, matrix mode. You can just remove the UI and just, just go by by your gut feeling. Use use the force. <laughs> and so I'm gonna select all the stuff. I'm gonna copy. Uh, and then we can use this paste, this tab tool to just create all of those individual segments. Cool. These are the different segments that we want to draw. Now all those segments are, oh, see, you have to watch out because if it's uh, just clicking this out. Okay, good. So now we should have eight segments, but you know, there are identical segments. That's kind of awkward, man. It's kind of awkward. Let's just, just do some, let's just do a, a thing that counts for us. Let's just do some tiles that count for us so we can see the differences between the segments. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at who's a good boy. Created, <laughs> recreated the Pico 8 pixel font without a single mistake. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm gonna down here at the bottom. And I'm gonna put down those. Um, I'm not gonna number our, our segments so we know which segment we're looking at. Uh, let's just like do it like this. One. Got him. So let us start this. So now we can see. Okay, we're scrolling. Can we see the second segment? Yes, there is a second segment. You can see the two appearing there. Perfect. 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 And now the segments are over because we haven't programmed the other segments. And, and again, we could have done this with some kind of smart math, but it's kind of nice if we can, whoops, if we can create like this system that is allows us to kind of see what is happening. So yeah, let's just do, um, let's just continue in this process. So it's like 32, uh, 48. Wait, I'm, I got confused. 32, 48, uh, 70, no, 64. Uh, 56, uh, 98. Oh my, this is embarrassing. So it's 80 and 96. And then you can actually see it if you do it, if you click here. So 96, if you hover here, I mean, 112 is the next one. Listen. Not all of us are math geniuses and certainly not, not me. Okay, so we're now just manually add in, adding all those segments. Again, this is just like a prototype. We just want to see how things look like. Okay, this looks like a solid scrolling speed. It's maybe a bit fast, but yeah, we can see the second segment and a third segment and so forth. So now it's time to kind of like see how long it takes to scroll through this inf entire map. Uh, for this actually, we probably want to, I mean, I could just sit there and, but I also, I maybe I just want to like draw the uh, amount of seconds that passed on the, onto the screen and we can just easily do this. We can just do a print uh, floor time. Uh, we're just gonna print the time on the screen at coordinate like five, five, uh, seven. So coordinate five, five and seven is the white color. Uh, 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 we, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. We need to close the, the, the brackets here. Mm, mm, there's something wrong. It should be seven. Why did I, why did I put one in there? Okay. So you can see it now we have a second uh, counter of seconds in the, in the corner. And now we're gonna sit here and I'm gonna wait until things are over and we're gonna see you know, what the timer says. Oh, okay, okay. Just over a minute, around 16, 60 seconds. Wow, yikes, that's a very short game. 60 seconds. So what is the speed at which we are flying? Um, 0 0.5. Speed 0 0.5 resulted in around 60 seconds. That's a very short game. So this actually lets us hit another problem, another question, which is 
what is a good length for a game? Like, what is like we want to have a one level, but is 60 seconds a good length for a level? What is a good length for a shrub level? Well, this is where we're going to get to the doggy zone. Mm -hmm -hmm. All right, so in this doggy zone, it's gonna be a bit weird. It's not gonna be programming so much. It's gonna be, it's gonna be some research questions. So the question I'm gonna ask that you should investigate next is, what is a good length for a shmup level? Find out, play some shmups, part of the research. If you maybe did some research, maybe you already answered that question, but maybe you haven't played uh, shmups with that question in mind. What is a length of a shmup level? How long is a shmup level? First question for the doggy zone. Another question that you should ask yourself, and maybe that's something if you really want to get like programming and something that you might want to explore is, what are, what idea, like let's assume this is too short, what ideas do you have to stretch that amount of, of real estate? How can we stretch, how to, can we make the level last longer with this little amount of uh, map real estate? How, what kind of ideas do you have? And maybe start experimenting with your own ideas to stretch this a little bit longer. This I think is a good template to start experimenting with different map scrolling systems. And this is gonna be it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. As always at the end of this episode, I'm gonna add a disclaimer, this show, this tutorial is supported by the wonderful people over at Coffee. Support me over at coffee.com slash lazy devs. One of the major perks of being a subscriber to this channel is that you get to see the next episode right away. So there's no need to wait until new episodes come out on YouTube. Coffee.com slash lazy devs. That is it, ladies and gentlemen, for today. So we did some scrolling testing. We did some basic scrolling but we need to do more tests with the scrolling. We need to find a more elaborate system. We need to also do some research and think about you know, what are actually our design goals. That's something we're gonna discuss on the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.